The cardiovascular system, like every other system in the body, is very important. And when there are problems with this system, your doctor may prescribe various medications to help. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this video, we're going to be looking at five kinds of cardiovascular drugs and how they work. So let's do it. The first type of medication that we're gonna look at is anticoagulant drugs. These are drugs that are used to decrease clotting. When there's excess clotting, that can block blood vessels. It can cut off oxygen and nutrient delivery to different tissues, and it can lead to a stroke. Anticoagulants help to decrease clotting. They do this by preventing the formation of new clots. An example of an anticoagulant is heparin. Heparin has its effect by binding to a specific enzyme called antithrombin-3. Now in my previous video on hemostasis where I covered the blood clotting process, I showed how one of the steps in this process is the formation of thrombin, which will then convert fibrinogen into fibrin, which is the active form. And that fibrin then forms a fibrin mesh that holds everything together to form the clot. Well, when heparin binds to antithrombin-3, it inactivates thrombin. And if thrombin is inactive, it is no longer going to stimulate the production of fibrin, and that will reduce the chances of forming the clot. If that doesn't make sense, then make sure to check out my video on hemostasis because I go into all of that in more detail. All right, let's look now to the next category, ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors are a class of drugs that block the angiotensin-converting enzyme. This enzyme is a very important enzyme. It converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And angiotensin 2 is a very potent vasoconstrictor. It causes your blood vessels to constrict, which has the result of increasing blood pressure. As you would imagine, if a person has high blood pressure, you want to do what you can to reduce blood pressure. ACE inhibitors will inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme so that the production of angiotensin 2 is reduced. And that will reduce vasoconstriction and help to lower blood pressure. The third type of cardiovascular medications that we'll talk about are the beta blockers. These drugs have the effect of decreasing heart rate and the force of contraction, which causes your blood pressure to go down and slows down the heart rate. It's often used when someone has a cardiac arrhythmia uh, to prevent heart attack or in some cases to lower blood pressure. Let's see how this works. You get excited, you're exercising, or, and your heart rate increases. That's because of the action of your sympathetic nervous system. The hormone epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, is released, and there are specific receptors in the heart muscle, but also in the arteries and the kidneys and other places that the epinephrine binds to. Now, those receptors are called beta receptors. And when adrenaline binds to those receptors, it causes the stress response, which includes things like increasing your heart rate and blood pressure. Well, a beta blocker does exactly what it sounds like it will do. It's what we call a competitive antagonist. It basically blocks the receptor sites on the beta receptors so that epinephrine can't bind to it. So it won't be able to do what it does. And that can help to reduce blood pressure and heart rate. It basically leads to the opposite of the fight or flight response. If a person has high blood pressure or some other heart related issues, this may be beneficial. So that's the beta blocker. We've done three drugs so far, let's do two more. Next, we have the calcium channel blockers. Now, calcium is a very important ion when it comes to muscle contraction. It's stored inside muscle cells inside a structure called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. When the muscle cell is stimulated, calcium is released from that sarcoplasmic reticulum through these calcium channels, and it enters the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, this step is a crucial step that causes muscle contraction. Well, as you can imagine, calcium channel blockers will block those calcium channels, preventing calcium from entering the muscle cells. And by doing this, it's gonna reduce contraction, which may help with things like lowering blood pressure and other issues related to the heart. It's like a hose, right? If you squeeze the hose, you increase the pressure. What we're trying to do here is reduce the squeezing 
to reduce the pressure. And lastly, let's talk about diuretics. These are also used to decrease blood pressure, but it does it in a different way. To understand how these drugs work, we have to know a little bit about the kidney. The functional unit of the kidney is called the nephron, and there are all kinds of things that happen in the nephron to filter the blood. At a certain point, one of the things that happens is sodium reabsorption. After the blood is filtered, the kidney is taking back some of the sodium. And what happens is that because sodium is coming back into the bloodstream, water comes along with it. Well, diuretics work by causing less sodium reabsorption. They're basically causing the kidney to get rid of more sodium. And by doing that, there'll be less water reabsorption. And yes, the body gets rid of more water and you pee a lot more. That's why it's called a diuretic. Now, by getting rid of more fluid, you're also decreasing the amount of fluid in the blood. And if you have less fluid going through the blood vessels, then you have less pressure in those vessels. And that's what we want in cases of high blood pressure. Now, there's obviously a whole lot more to these drugs that I can't cover in this short video, but I try to touch on some of the major points to help explain the general mechanisms behind how they affect the cardiovascular system. Obviously, there are other systems these drugs can affect and many other drugs that affect the, the cardiovascular system, but here's the cool part. We have comments. If you know a different drug and its mechanism, go ahead and share it in the comments below so that we can all continue learning. My name is Leslie Samuel. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.